You're very welcome. Welcome to the Twisted Pepper, and welcome to this, uh, the first of the Co Love debates for, for the kind of this, this winter series. Um, delighted to have you, and uh, delighted to have our, our, our guest speakers tonight. What is the Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership? Tell us nothing of what you make of it yet, but tell us what is it. Okay. Um, the Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership is an um, EU US investment treaty. It's often referred to as a trade agreement. I say it's more of an investment uh, treaty. And um, the objective of it is, is to elevate uh, private companies to the international status of uh, sovereign nation states. So that if a private company feels aggrieved that um, government regulations have uh, interfered with their, uh, with their profits in any way, they can bypass national, European and American courts and sue the government directly for compensation in a private arbitration dispute. Why now? Yeah, I think, Noel, um, first of all, can I just thank Mark for the invitation to speak uh, and great to be on the stage with Barry and with Noel. Um, I think the impetus is probably jobs. Um, I think that in the current climate when everybody's resource constrained, it's difficult to come up with money to spend to create jobs. So, if you will, a non-expensive way in terms of putting money in is to try to promote trade and hopefully that will increase employment. So I'd say, Noel, and you, as you flagged, it's getting into tricky waters in terms of the process, but the impetus, I imagine, was to create more jobs on both sides of the Atlantic. Okay. Uh, and surely there are hundreds and thousands of ways in which American companies, uh, which I suspect you're understandably sceptical of, have designed ways to ensure that they don't face open competition in their market from uh, European companies or uh, here. I mean, this, this, this makes eminent sense. Uh, and to be honest, you know, if that's what it was all about, I don't think we'd have the level of privacy around the talks that we have. I mean, we, it's a situation where you have uh, members of the European Parliament holding little protests inside the Parliament because there's only 15 of the 800 odd of them allowed in to see parts of the draft text. And the way in to see the draft text, they're frisked. They're not allowed to bring in phones or cameras and they're not allowed to take notes. And if it was all just about medical devices and cars and sensible things like that, and so I'm kind of going like, well, there must be things there that are unpalatable to the general public that, um, that, 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 are, that, that negotiators don't want to bring out into the open. You've got two things going on here. You've got a negotiation, right? And we've all been involved in negotiations. And, you know, Croke Park, Haddington Road, Good Friday. People didn't show their hands publicly when they're in the middle of negotiations. So that's the first point I'd make, right? There has to be some element, I suppose, of being able to hold your position when you're in a negotiation. Mark, uh, fine. Final word from you, and okay. then wrap up with Barry. Noel, thanks a million. This has been a great debate. I have learned a lot. I want to thank Mark for organising it. I've learned a lot too. I've learned a lot. But if I may, folks, I'm just going to say, this is where I'm coming from. I'm sorry to repeat it. We have barriers of trade between this country and Europe and the United States. They're impacting on small businesses particularly. Why should we keep them? Let's remove them in a legitimate, in a legitimate process, in a legitimate process, and that's... My final comment. Okay. First they ignore you, Sorry, then they ridicule you, then they call you a liar. Okay, and so up until about a month ago, the strategy of the corporations in Europe was to go, there is no discussion. When hundreds of thousands of people started protesting, and when it's quite obvious that huge sections of civil society in America are making common cause with civil society in, in Europe. We have the vision of the good life. We know what democracy is. We have solidarity with the people of the earth. We are going to work and we are going to campaign and we're going to write letters and we're going to have meetings and we're going to educate ourselves and we're going to talk about it at work and we're going to talk about it at dinner parties and we're going to move, okay? We have the power in our hands and in our feet and in our minds to create a, a better world where we can share the resources of the earth with each other and we can put corporations back into their place and if they have a problem, they can go to the courts the same as the rest of us. Thank you.